Hey guys, El Gapo here from Benchtech UK. I'm going to be giving you a quick tour of the BIOS on the A75 UD4H from Gigabyte. As you can see here, we're at the splash screen. Same picture you'll get on the front of the box. As soon as the lights on your keyboard flash, you can hit delete to enter the BIOS. What you're going to do now. And you'll see once we're in here, we've got an award BIOS, rather than the UEFI you'll see on other boards. Um, they're waiting for a ward to come up to the graphical bias. Hopefully, you'll be able to flush it to this board. Not 100% certain, but you should be able to. The first thing I should mention these profiles down at the bottom, which are quite important. Uh, you don't have to use them, but I think you should. I've got um, a stock profile with uh, the RAM set to the maximum, and I've got a 3D profile that's overclocked for when I want a game because I don't want to be running running up to 60 degrees every day. So, hit F11 to save a profile and F12 to load one up. I'm going to load this one right now. I'm going to the MIT section. The first thing at the top is your IGX config, which is your integrated graphics. Uh, you can set the amount of RAM it uses from 256 meg up to 1 gig. Uh, change your Dual DVI link settings, enable and disable, and your core clock control. You can, it's better to knock that off or to onto manual if you're overclocking. CPU host clock can go down as low as 800 MHz and as high as 2.9 GB when the base clock is on auto. You can change that to manual. You can change all these settings by hitting plus or minus on your keyboard or hitting enter. And on the voltage, you just type in whatever you want and it'll set it to the nearest one. Easy LC profiles, these are quite handy. These are just popped up in the F5 bias. Uh, sets the timing is quite baggy. I'll show you now. If it's set, no. It autos, 10 10 10 for most kits. I think it sets more like that and the, uh, it sets the north bridge automatically as well you'll see there's no multiplier they've tested it up to 170 base clock I think they said which is quite nice to know system voltage go down again PLL this goes up in 20, 20 millivolt jumps uh, that's the, one of the coarsest ones the, Voltage and north bridge voltage uh, go up in 25 millivolt steps. And these are the only ones that are relative voltages. When you change these, it'll tell you what's going to be set, whereas the other ones tell you what actually is set, and you type in what you want to be set when you save. The SCH voltage, uh, that's the chipset. Uh, akin to what your south bridge voltage would have been on previous board, there's not really much merit in overvolting it. ADP shouldn't be that high. <laughs> I found uh, 1.2 to be the sweet spot on my chip at least. It's um, helped quite a bit when up in RAM clocks, especially when using uh, the APU for graphics. CPU north bridge, this uh, it controls the voltage for your integrated graphics as well. And for CPU north bridge, so bear that in mind if you're going to be overclocking that. Um, PDR three voltage, obviously. Five millivolt steps for this, the FTH and the PCIe PLL, um, which is quite nice. It used to be a lot closer. Moving on, standard seamless, time and date, um, automatic hard drive protection. You should expect. Advanced bias, got the IGB configuration again, if you're a bit scared of the MIT section, virtualization, cool and quiet, um, the EFR boot option, folder it was there, uh, change your boot order and whatnot. Down here, it should really be set to onboard, but it picks it up regardless. This way you'll set your SAT types. You want to set to RAID, I will set RAID because I'm going to show you that bias later on as well. Disable all the other controllers if you want. Uh, right and left 
these are the USB 3.0 ports on the back of the board and they get a bit iffy when you start overclocking power management this in particular is quite handy power on my keyboard um, I usually set it to any key and you can just bash your keyboard when you want your computer to, co to come on it doesn't have to be in sleep mode it can be completely shut down you can fill it by your mouse as well or enter a password if you want power on by alarm be handy if you're an office computer I guess temperatures and voltage monitoring in this section they are bob on in the bias they can be a bit iffy in windows but Seems to be always correct in here. Oh yeah, this is as far as the fan control goes. Is not really much to it. Much PWM. And that's about it. Apart from these, this will set JDEC settings on your RAM. Optimize defaults all load slightly faster. SPD. So I'm going actually. I'll load that and change it to RAID for now. Show you this one. It's take a little while to post. Be on the ball with control enough because it flashes up quite quickly. And here we are, standard AMD RAID BIOS. One to view what the drives are up to, check on your health status and that. Two to see and define your LD control of the. You can view the single di disk even when in the RAID array. Control and see you can define a new RAID. Do row 0, 1, and 10, and 5 apparently. We set the 0 and go down. Three options for strike sizes 64, 128, and 256k. Um, initialization, gigabyte boundary, read policy, and write policy. And leave them all on also. Um, to change the options, press spacebar. Once you do that, you'll hit Control and Y and give you an option to name the array and then an option to save it. I'm not going to do it right now because I'd rather not wipe my drives. Three to delete the array and four to see what you control, what controller it is. That's about as far as I'm going to go. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you've not read the full review, please check it out on Bunch Tech and. See you later.